Hello everybody, my name is Pixel and welcome to the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel. Today we are going to be taking a quick look at some gameplay from Deliver Us The Moon, a game that describes itself as a sci-fi thriller set in an apocalyptic near future where the Earth's natural resources have been depleted and you, a lone astronaut, are being sent to the moon on a critical mission in order to save humanity from extinction. I don't know about you, but I find that to be a pretty exciting premise. To be completely honest, I never even knew that this game existed until I received an email just the other day granting me access to a press build, and since I'm a sucker for most forms of media with a near future sci-fi setting, I decided to give it a try. Now, before we talk about my initial impressions, I want to make it clear that we did receive access to the game for free, and the gameplay was also recorded prior to release on a build that's still labelled as beta. Also, I want to let you know that I've only actually played a couple of hours of the game at the time of recording this video, and with that out of the way, let's have a gander at the game itself. Deliver Us The Moon starts off with you still on Earth, and your first job is to prep a rocket that will hopefully get you into space. I won't lie, my initial impressions at this point weren't all that positive, mainly due to the way that the game controlled. Everything felt kind of floaty and the performance was very unstable. It's almost as if the developers had completely forgotten that you start off on Earth since the movement and even the gravity itself seems to be exactly the same as what we see while on the moon base later on. If it wasn't for the intriguing story, I probably would have just closed the game and forgotten about it, but thankfully the voice acting, setting and the early reveals did do enough to encourage me to continue, and I'm glad that I did, because once you launch yourself into space, things really start to improve. Upon docking with the space station, your perspective shifts to a first person one as you explore by floating around in microgravity, which is a lot of fun. Gameplay wise, Deliver Us From The Moon is pretty much what many people would describe as a walking simulator. Most of your time is actually spent examining objects, listening to voice recordings and pretty much just taking in as much of the environmental storytelling as possible and this aspect of the game is done very well. Unfortunately though, the rest of your time is spent trying to solve various puzzles. Now, I'm not against the idea of puzzles in general, in fact many of my favourite games of all time are quite literally puzzle games, it's just I've yet to find a walking simulator which does this kind of gameplay well. That said, I suppose on some kind of level that kind of makes sense, as if the puzzles were any good we would be calling this a puzzle game and not a walking simulator. I've actually got two main complaints about puzzles in these type of games. One, either the puzzles are far too easy and the answer is provided to you up front, meaning that it becomes more about following instructions than thinking for yourself, or they are far too easy to brute force, meaning trying to come up with a solution in your head is not worth the effort when there's only a handful of possible solutions anyway. And two, put simply, I find it really frustrating when implementing the solution to a puzzle takes longer than finding that solution in the first place. For instance, very early on in the game, a ladder breaks and I instantly knew that I would have to find something to climb on, so while I knew exactly what I would have to do within a few seconds, I would then still have to spend a few minutes in actually setting it up and that's just something I don't like. In contrast, for the most part at least, a puzzle game such as Portal can have you stumped for quite some time, but once it clicks and you know what you're supposed to be doing, it normally only takes a few seconds to implement that solution. I mean, don't get me wrong, I get it, developers are trying to offer more interaction in order to avoid labels like walking simulators, it's just, I honestly believe that the saying less is more holds more weight than many people realise, as I'm confident that this game would be literally better without most of these puzzles. To be clear, I'm not talking about basic interactions such as flicking switches or environmental hazards as these can do a great job of immersing you into the world, rather just cut the fat and avoid forcing the player into doing busy work. If all this sounds rather negative, it's only because the aspects that I enjoy are really well done. The voice acting for the most part is on point, visually the game can look very impressive and the story slash setting is something that's right up my street. The game does do a great job of drip feeding you just enough intrigue to keep you pushing forward despite some of its weaker elements. I, like many other people, have got a deep appreciation for decent environmental storytelling and Deliver Us The Moon does manage to provide the goods in that area. Throughout the game you will also come across these sort of holographic echoes of the past which you are able to watch. So far these are the highlights for me as they are a nice little info dump that gets you more and more invested into the stories and the characters. Claire. This is Isaac. Hi. I'm not sure if this message will ever reach you. I, uh, I don't think it will. But I'm trying anyway. We haven't spoken since the arguments about Kathy. I want you to know that she's safe and well. This message will be the last you'll ever get from me or from anyone else up here. It's probably something you'll never understand. <laughs> Hell, I barely do. If someone ever finds out, 
what happened here. Know that I did it for her. For your sister. To give her a chance. <laughs> but you'll do great. <clears throat> you'll do great things. Take care. And, uh... I love you. I wish I said that more often. <laughs> Back when you still called me dad. Goodbye, Claire. I actually look forward to playing some more over the coming days, and provided that the narrative beats keep on coming and the exploration remains interesting, I don't doubt that I'll be seeing this game through to completion. Overall, my impressions so far have been fairly positive, with just the puzzles and the performance being the only real frustrations. While yes, the game does look visually very pretty, I still don't believe that the graphical quality on display here justifies some of the dips we are seeing when it comes to our frame rate. It's always a big red flag to me when you can look directly at a flat surface and still see your frame rate plummet. Thankfully, it's not like you're going to be relying on quick reactions or very precise aim adjustments, so it's by no means a deal breaker, it's just a bit of a shame that the optimization appears to be lacking, something that is certainly not helped by the lackluster options menu that combines many effects under a single setting. But anyway, it, it is what it is. It's not like it impacted my experience enough to make me want to put the game down. I just really hope that these developers do put a bit more effort into finding that nice balance between visuals and performance for their future projects. Like I said earlier, I have been having a fair amount of fun when playing this game, so I certainly will be hoping to play it through to completion. At the time of recording this video, I don't yet know the price of the game, but I would say that I would personally be comfortable dropping like 15 quid or 20-ish dollars. I mean, obviously the value of a game means very different things to different people, so it's not exactly a great metric to go off, but I'm sure you get the idea. With all that said, that is once again going to be me done for today, so thank you so much for watching. If you are new around here, then please do consider slapping that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified of our future uploads. If you like this kind of video, then we would really appreciate it if you liked the video, and if you disliked it, there's a button for that too, and all we ask is that you please let us know why you disliked it down in the comment section below. Talking about the comment section, if you've got any questions, suggestions or feedback, please leave it down there and I will try to get back to you as soon as I get a moment free. So yeah, from myself and everyone here at the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I will catch you later. Bye-bye.